Hi, my name is Peter Anders. I'm a professor at Edinburgh Napier University. This is my lecture series on the evolution of complex systems. This is lecture 10, Technological Systems. This is part 1 of lecture 10. Now, so far we discussed about society uh, and various subsystems of it. Now, one key question that we address in this lecture is how can we view technological systems? through the lens of the systems theory uh, that we apply in the context of a society. So first we'll be a look at uh, writing, including books and libraries. Can we view this uh, as a subsystem of the society and to what extent? Then we will consider machines, both simple and complicated machines, and look at their role in the context of uh, the society uh, and considering them in the context of systems theory. And then we will look at roads, vehicles, and then transportation systems again from this perspective. So uh, we discussed about writing earlier, and we said that it comes from the counting and the counting of, uh, of many animals in the early stage. If you look at writing, uh, it is about uh, preserving communications, uh, human communications. It can be written in stone, on leather, paper, or other material. In general, it is about uh, somehow making marks on this uh, medium that is used for the preservation of the, uh, of the writing. And there is some associated uh, meaning to these uh, symbols. In early writing, uh, example, if you consider hieroglyphic writing, uh, each symbol had a particular uh, meaning, uh, where there was some uh, flexibility provided by the context of other symbols. As writing evolved, it became more abstract, and today uh, the writing that we use um, in the Western world is it's an abstract writing. The, the letters that we use, symbols that we use, do not have any particular uh, meaning. However, uh, their combinations into words, uh, those have the meanings. So overall, the objective of, of writing things is to store and preserve spoken language. Be that the counting of animals, be that a uh, writing of souls, be that a uh, recording of speeches. In general, that is the aim of the writing. So, the, the, the writing can be seen as a memory of verbal communications and is used in this role by re reading uh, what has been written down, that is, regenerating that communication that was recorded in the writing. Now, in this way, uh, this stored spoken language extends the reference space for human communications because acting as memory allows you to reference communications that were uh, generated a long time before. So, um, in this way, you can reference these communications that are written down for a very long time without uttering a uh, uh, the communications that were given. However, it is important to note that the um, interpretation of this written communication, the meaning of it, may change over time if you have sufficiently long time periods. So, for example, if you consider the Bible as it has, it is written, uh, it had a certain meaning, let's say, uh, about 1,500 years ago, and today it has a different meaning because the interpretation of context has changed. 1,500 years ago, there was not much uh, uh, communication available in, in the form of the current science, uh, while today that is much more available, which alters how the interpretation of this written-down communication uh, is done, although the same uh, writing is available today as at that time. Now, uh, the written language has its grammar, which uh, 
expresses the rules of the written communication. These are the constraints uh, on the continuations of the written communications. Um, and considering the grammar, actually statement of grammatical rules, that adds more meaning to the written communications because constraining them also uh, provides a, a framework of reference to what are the rules of certain words, what how uh, words and sentences can be combined. Now, if you look at books, they are very large amounts of written communications, a large amount of text. It, the books typically are organized in some systematic way using some internal referencing structure. So sentences reference other sentences, there are references to chapters, sections, and so on. And there is also an external referencing structure in addition to this, uh, quite often in books, which reference other books or texts or events uh, uh, that happened and which have been uh, recorded in written communications. So you can see books as a kind of extension of uh, spoken text, same apply to, uh, applies to articles as well, uh, which are large pieces of written text expressing um, a large amount of uh, communications, human communications, and providing uh, the recording of these human communications, allowing complex uh, and long sequences of uh, reasoning to be recorded uh, through these uh, written communications. Moving further, if you look at the libraries, uh, these are large collections of books. Again, they are systematically organized. They have a structure. Uh, the way how they are organized provides this structure. And picking a book from it gives you uh, an understanding of what the book might be about, uh, where you may find uh, reference sensors. So the libraries themselves provide further structure over collections of books that help the reader uh, of these books to understand uh, the meaning and also to find the right uh, references, right books that they need. Now, obviously, uh, libraries today uh, are becoming uh, more digital, some people use uh, digital books, however, the same kind of systematic organization of uh, the paper-based libraries apply to electronic libraries as well. So, uh, we had a look at uh, written communications from early stages to modern and including uh, larger texts like article books and also collections of these uh, in the libraries, or in the same way you may consider collections of them in two journals. So, is this a system? Uh, are these written communications forming a system in the way that we define systems? What are uh, the, how are they reproduced? And is there a specialist language which would define this particular system within uh, society? Now, if you look at communications, uh, the humans, the books, texts, um, the journals, papers, and so on. So these are all uh, communication units which produce communications. But in general, it's, uh, it is important to have somewhere humans involved who read these communications in order to uh, turn uh, to, to reference them in the context of the society. So the text communications, uh, as I said, uh, the meaning depends on the referential context. And that referential context may change over time. Uh, and these determine the expectations about communications that are generated by the reading of these text communications. It is important to note here that um, more recently there are all, um, already some tools which provide you electronic uh, and automated reading of text to generate, for example, summarizations. However, in all these cases, again, the role of humans is critical because you need the humans to, to read and act on these communications or listen to them. 
that's an important note as well, that today uh, reading is quite often replaced by listening, where there is an automated reader who reads out the uh, communications in books, for example. Now, if you look at the referencing, clearly uh, we have the grammar of the written language, uh, which tells you how written words can follow each other to make meaningful sentences, and uh, what parts of sentence are required to, to have them as meaningful sentences. Book structures provide uh, additional referencing structure in the same way as the library structures do the same. So these help to find which parts of these text communications are relevant, which are uh, appropriate in the context of a particular search for appropriate references. So if you look at the reproduction of written communications, uh, this happens in the context of the society. And these are generated by other humans or by <coughs> automated tools, uh, which summarize, for example, uh, written text. <coughs> or uh, if you look at the most recent transformers, which can generate written text. However, all of these are based on pre-existing uh, human written, uh, written communications. Uh, which are referenced uh, either directly or indirectly uh, by these ways of production of verbal written communications. So in this way, you see that the written communications are part of the society. They expand the society and provide memory communications within the society, which allow referencing over very long times of uh, communications that has been, have been recorded as written communications. Uh, written communications have their specialist language, <coughs> where uh, you can see that the uh, grammar of written language is different from the rules of the spoken language. In spoken language, you have more flexibilities uh, relative to the written language compared to the written language. Uh, many of the rules of the written language can be fully or partially broken in the context of sp spoken language, and it still makes sense. So, in that sense, the written communications are the restricted, restricted version of the uh, spoken communications, of the human communications. So, all text reference other texts, and these texts reference also human communications. Uh, so, and human communications reference text communications regularly. So overall, what you see is that written communications can be seen as part of the memory subsystem of the society, where there is a clear density boundary uh, which involves both humans and uh, written communications. Uh, and this is determined by the use of the written communication. Uh, of the uh, language of the written communication and the constraints of, the, of that language. So overall, you see written communications are a subsystem of the society which allow the extension of the human communications by serving as memories. So in this way, uh, the written communications, as we noted earlier, expand very much uh, the memory subsystem of the human uh, communications of the society, which is the system of human communications. Now the texts, books, libraries, uh, journals, and so on, is provide additional uh, frameworks, additional rule sets, if you like. These are institutional frameworks in the context of written communications, which constrain these and also by referencing this institutional framework add meaning to them and help the long-term preservation of the communications uh, conveyed by them. So, after concluding that the written communications are part of the society and effective form a subsystem, and in particular subsystem of the memory subsystem of the human society, let's move on to consider machines. So, Machines are used in many contexts in society and have been used for at least uh, millennia uh, in, in various ways. At the beginning, these were very simple machines. Today, we have many, many complex machines. So let's have a look at how 
machines can be interpreted in, uh, in the context of society through the systems theoretic approach. So if you look at simple machines, for example, consider it on. Yes, it has a number of components, but the number of components is relatively small. So it is a relatively simple machine. So you have mechanical components, uh, which are organized in very well-determined manner. So certain pieces fit in just one particular place. And you can put these together to deliver um, an object, uh, a human artifact, which gives certain affordance, certain ways of usage, which are useful in some way uh, in the context of the human uh, society. For example, it, uh, the guns allow the hunting of animals more efficiently than, for example, the spears. If you look at complicated machines, for example, consider a car, again, you have uh, a number of components, these are mechanical, chemical, electric, and other components. There are many, uh, very many, so it can be in the range of the thousands. Uh, and again, there is a systematic manner how you put these together in order to uh, make the particular machine. Which again produces a range of behaviors, provides a range of affordances, and allows humans to use them. And this usage helps the, uh, the maintenance and expansion of the society. So, if you look at machines, these are artifacts which are produ products of, uh, of human communications. You need human communications to act on the environment, to pick the right materials put them in the right shape, put them together, and assemble them ultimately as machines. So all these human communications are referenced by the machine as a human artifact, which represents all those com human communications which led to the production uh, of the machine. And in this way, uh, the machines themselves are memories of these communications, and they are also serving as memories of facilitating the reproduction of communications that the humans uh, can do using the particular machine. So this is how you, humans use the photosis to generate a number of communications. So for example, if you consider the car, humans can use it to travel, to transport other humans, to transport other things, uh, uh, objects, and so on. Uh, and increases the range of human communications that can be uh, generated by allowing humans to travel faster, uh, further, and to carry with them a number of uh, artifacts that have their communications with other humans. So if you look at the communication side of the machines, um, it produces a number of behaviors, so changing how their components are, that's generally a behavior of the machine. And some of these behaviors can be seen uh, by humans as communications. Um, for example, if the car lights on the side are blinking uh, or the front are blinking, they have a particular meaning associated to them. Uh, and humans can see these communications as communications uh, which have interpretation that can be referenced. Uh, for example, consider Alexa or Siri talking to you. Uh, you can uh, respond to what they say and they respond further. Or, for example, consider the behavior of robots. Um, if you see a lawnmower robot which walks around the field, uh, it does have behaviors, possibly it blinks, possibly it closes, uh, produces sounds. Uh, and all these behaviors can be understood by humans, can be referenced by humans, and trigger further human behaviors, further human communications. So in this way, the machines produce communications that can trigger further human communications. If you look at the uh, machine grammars, how the machines produce their communications, what you see is that these are relatively simple grammars. So Parts of the machine can interact in very restricted ways. 
And these restricted ways of interactions between parts of the machine lead to the production of the behaviors of these machines. But again, there is a very limited range of uh, behaviors that can be produced by the machine. So there are very sharp continuation rules uh, for the machine internal machine communications which lead to the behaviors of the machines. <laughs> so although machines may generate a range of behaviors, but if you look at uh, more advanced robots, there is still a quite strict limitation on how many and what kind of behaviors these machines can generate. So uh, question is, are these machine systems, do they have a communication density boundary on them, do they reproduce, or how they do they reproduce, and do they have a specialist language defining their system. And if you look at communications, uh, they are communications between machines. So for example, if you consider an automated assembly line in a factory, where one machine interacts with the next machine and then the next machines, and possibly you have very few humans around uh, which are needed to location intervene, then you have a lot of communications between these machines. But again, these communications are quite narrowly specified. And again, there are also many human-machine communications where human <coughs> intervention is needed. <coughs> Partly this is the uh, communications which lead to the production uh, of human com uh, of the machines through human communications, but also these are the interventions when humans need to intervene to change how the machine behaves or fix the machine, uh, and they are not behaving correctly. So, machine communications reference each other human communications for the generation of new communications uh, across the existence of the machine. Now. There is much less uh, a clear referencing boundary. Uh, there are many machine, 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 human communications, uh, but there are relatively few communications com com compared to other human communications. And when these boundaries exist, uh, they are existing for a relatively short period of time or in a very restricted manner. So whether you may see machines uh, in the same way communicating with humans as writing, <clears throat> the frequency of these communications are uh, more restricted. Uh, they're, they're the uh, continuation uh, distributions are much more sharply uh, specified, and the range of machine behaviors are much more narrow compared to the kind of implied behaviors by text. So if you look at the reproduction, machines are reproduced by intervention of human communications. Uh, essentially, humans need to be uh, generating human communications, human behaviors that lead to uh, the production or the reproduction of machines. Now, you can also look at uh, self-reproducing robots. However, these are relatively uh, simple. And even in those cases, there are original designs that are generated by humans. And these are referenced when the, the new robot is uh, generated. And again, there is a quite limited range of, what, uh, of, of how these robots can be generated. Now, in principle, this could expand. However, again, it is very likely, um, even with most recent AI tools, that these robots, self-reproducing robots, um, would be quite uh, limited to a certain range of tasks, and their communications and ways of how they behave would be quite narrowly uh, defined. So overall, you, in the context of society, you can see machines as products of human communications and artifacts, and which are memories of the communications which led to their production, and also which serve as memories of all those communications that are triggered by the affordances of these machines, and which allow humans to uh, reproduce uh, these communications. So again, to some extent, similar to writing, machines can be seen as extensions of the memory uh, subsystem of the human society. And they are involved in a number of communications. However, in our view, they do not form yet 
uh, at least a separate subsystem uh, in the system uh, of society. However, as there are increasingly more machines and more sophisticated machines, there is some uh, indication that potentially these can become a subsystem in the same way as writing and written text is already a subsystem of the human society. <clears throat> Finally, let's have a look at uh, roads and transportation. So if you consider roads, uh, they are very important in society. Uh, all those early societies which built roads systematically were able to expand more and were uh, often much more successful than other competing societies. For example, if you consider Romans, uh, the Roman road system was a very important uh, and significant part of the Roman expansion. It allowed the Roman troops to be uh, to uh, to progress and carry themselves much quicker than opponents uh, and allowed uh, much better mobilization of the Roman army compared to uh, their opponents. In the same way, in modern days, uh, the, uh, the building of the road systems and the maintenance of road systems is very important. You can look at the German and the US road systems, which were built in the uh, early part of the 20th century, which were major tools for the modernization of these countries and led to the expansion of their economies and uh, the growth of these societies overall. Now, if you look at communications, uh, roads obviously are produced uh, by human communications. So they are artifacts uh, generated by particular patterns of human communications, which act on the environment and cause a change in the environment by creating the road. They also provide signals uh, for humans, for example, the direction of road following the road will lead you to a human settlement. And in this way, uh, they help the expansion of human communications because they allow establishing of human communications that otherwise might be much more difficult to, uh, to get established. Now, on the means of the roads, uh, there were postal systems built. Uh, postal systems in early days were mainly uh, messengers of the kings and other uh, political leaders. In the mid-19th century, we get to the, the kind of expansion of postal systems. There were before, in the previous few hundred years, there were some uh, variants of postal systems. But this is in the mid-19th century, the Turner Texas uh, counts uh, established a proper postal system in uh, Germany, which then later spreads to other countries. <clears throat> and in Britain, uh, the stamps, postal stamps are introduced, and other standardized procedures are introduced in the postal system, which allows the expansion of the, uh, the use of transportation over the roads, because by standardization, it makes easier the processing, it makes less likely uh, the making of errors, which need Correction. So the, the uh, transportation system can expand uh, much more. So today, transportation system involves rail, ship, and plane, and of course, uh, trucks as well. They transport humans, written communications, artifacts, machines, and everything. And overall, uh, these, uh, these transportation systems facilitate the ex expansion of the setting of the human communication. So the system of human communication society expands very much through this transportation. Uh, for example, if you look recently, uh, the logistic networks, which are effectively the, uh, the use of transportation to, uh, to transport goods across uh, the world, uh, this logistic system uh, got uh, reduced, effectively choked during uh, the recent uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Now, what that meant is that the number of interactions between companies were reduced, the number of interactions between humans and companies were reduced, and for a short period of time, it looked uh, 
very bad. It looked like the economy would be shrinking very significantly. Now, since then, the, uh, the transportation of goods and the logistic uh, uh, network in the world has recovered to a large extent, but there are still important choke points, and there is still uh, not yet uh, at the level of working as it was before the pandemic years. And clearly, this, this change in the transportation system has a significant impact. It's led to uh, shrinking of economies, uh, or the, uh, since then, through the recovery of the transportation systems, it also led to the growing, more recent growing of the economies. But what you see is very important that the transportation systems and their working has a very big impact on the economy and correspondingly on the growth and size of the society as well. Now, if you look at the transportation system from the perspective of their language, what you see is that there are road signs, they are uh, an established set of road signs that are used in uh, most countries, and these road signs usually map from one country to another, uh, which allow you to use the roads, for example, speed limit signs, crossing signs, uh, and other signs that we use in, uh, in roads. Uh, you can look at stamps and other uh, standard procedures in the transportations, uh, be the transportation of letters or be the transportation of goods, the various uh, procedures at, uh, at the customs, uh, again, which involve standard uh, paperwork, production of standard checks and so on. So all these constitute the language of the transportation system. Now, the question is, is this really a, a system in the way that we define systems? Or in the subsystem of the society, is there, there a communication density boundary? How is the reproduction? Is there a defining language? And well, um, what you can see is that uh, the the transportation system and the, its components need to communicate with humans, uh, and and these communications with humans facilitate further human communications. And again, they act as forms of memories or facilitators of reproduction of earlier human communications, especially if you look at the uh, transportation of goods, transportation of uh, of, of uh, texts, both electronic transportation and uh, and poster transportation. Uh, the reproduction of uh, elements of the transportation system involves humans, and you need human intervention to uh, produce these uh, components of the transportation system. And overall, it is part of a society, and it is an extension of a society that helps the regeneration of human communications and helps the generation of new communications through the affordances provided by the transportation system. Now, there is a specialist language, again, involves appropriate human communications as well. So overall, the transportation system can be seen in a similar way as the system of machines. It is an extension of the human society, mainly related to the uh, memory subsystem of the human society by facilitating production of new uh, human communications. So in summary, uh, we looked at writing uh, and books and libraries and written communications in general, and we said that these constitute clearly a subsystem of the memory subsystem of the human society, and they facilitate uh, the production of human communications. Uh, machines and machine systems, we said that these are smaller in scale compared to the writing and the uh, role of written communications, but they are growing, and other, most of these machines involve um, quite specific communication between their parts and themselves and uh, humans. Um, the moment they do not necessarily constitute a subsystem, but they are part of the memory subsystem of the human uh, uh, society and they facilitate the reproduction of human communications either by the production of them or by providing the affordances for human communications. Finally, transportation systems, uh, we said that these are roads and uh, other transportation ways involving all the machines like ships and planes uh, and those computers which allow you to transport electronic communications uh, and electronic goods. 
And all these systems uh, form again a, a part of the memory subsystem of the human society seen as a communication system, and they facilitate the generation of new communications. In general, they have some specialist language, but again, we do not see them necessarily as a separate uh, subsystem, although they have some features in the same way as machines and machine systems have these as well. Let's see a few questions. Um, is it true that the continuation rules of written language have the same distributions as the continuation rules of spoken language? And the answer is no. Generally, the continuation rules of written language are stricter than the continuation of spoken language. There are certain variations in spoken language which are not allowed in the context of the written language. Next, is it true that the structure of a library adds meaning to the communications contained in books of the library? And generally, this is true in the sense that when the human searches for the right books, the right communications that they need for referencing, the structure of the library helps them to find this, and in this way, it adds meaning to the communications contained in books by implying what kind of communications can be expected from a book. Next, is it true that communications between components of a modern car constitute the communication system? And we said that <coughs> although these communications between the components are forming a set of communications which have certain uh, continuation rules, they are very narrowly specified how they can uh, follow one communication and another communication between the car components. And they, they need communications with humans uh, as well in order to uh, make them um, a meaningful communication in the context of the uh, society. So overall, we said that the car, car itself does not constitute a communication system. It's too narrow, it's best by, uh, and enforced to make human communication. However, you may point out that there are automated cars, uh, for example, the, the ones that are used in the context of mining, where the cars get loaded, take the load, discard uh, the load, uh, then I go back, get loaded again, and so on. Now, and these can be seen as uh, more autonomous uh, cars, and clearly you can see the self-driving cars in general as more autonomous cars. However, again, in this context, still they can be seen as part of a larger machinery where uh, communications with humans are uh, critically uh, required. They are made through human communications, and they are not consisting a separate communication system. Next question, is it true that roads are similar to machines that have the expansion of the society system? And indeed, that's what we said, that both roads and machines are part in the general sense of the memory subsystem of the human society, and they help the reproduction of communications by facilitating the production of these human communications. Finally, is it true that the railways constitute a system with its own specific language? And now, railways have their own specific language in the sense of specific signals, specific ways of uh, responding to signals. So they have their own specific language, however, they are embedded in the society. Uh, the railways themselves do not form a separate system without the involvement of human communication, so they do not constitute a uh, a system with uh, own specific language in the sense of how we define uh, the complex systems in the context of our systems theory analysis.